So this morning I want to talk about the coming year. And I, I don't know that I've ever, um, uh, maybe I have, um, as we've headed into a new year, had a specific message for, for the coming year. But specifically, I, I want to talk about having a game plan for 2016. I want to set this up. Um, a, um, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I, I coached my boys in basketball, and, 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 um, and Benjamin specifically, we had a game a few weeks ago, and it was our first game. And we had practiced our offense, and we had practiced our defense, we had practiced inbound plays, we had practiced all that. And then at the beginning of the game, the other team, and, and, and let me just say this, uh, some of you may not understand this, but at the beginning of the game, the other team full court pressed us from the beginning of the game. And I sat on the sidelines and I thought, oh, we didn't go over this. <laughs> and so for the entire first half, it was call timeout and try to make a plan to beat this, this press that they were. So for those of you that don't understand, it's basically when you throw the ball in, the other team is all over you from the beginning. They just, they, and, and you can't advance the ball. And it was, it was steal after steal after steal after turnover after turnover after turnover after steal after steal after steal. And it wasn't until the second half that we were able to advance the ball regularly past half court. And that was because the other team had quit pressing us. That was, you can laugh for those of you that understand. But I sat, I sat back and I thought, we have no plan for this. These guys haven't been equipped for this. We did not plan for this type of, this type of activity on the basketball court. We didn't, we didn't plan for the enemy's strategy or the opponent's strategy against us. And a lot of times in life, we don't plan, we don't, we don't take into account that the enemy has a strategy against us. That you know that the enemy has a strategy against you. So I, I want to talk about I want to talk about a game plan, having a game plan for 2016. How many how many as you walk through? Like, can you believe 2015's over? How many? I, I Christmas got here and I thought Christmas is here. It's already here, and 2016 starts this week. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, from October to November, uh, October to now, I, I, life has been a blur. Anybody, anybody out there? Where in the world did the time go? And so a lot of times we walk through life and we're just, we're just kind of, we're just kind of responding to everything that's going on. And before we know it, a year has gone by, two years, three years, five years. How many ever had things you wanted to do? And you never, you never got it done. Time just keeps passing. Time doesn't stop, does it? It just keeps going. We blink and then... It's another year. I want to encourage you this year to, to approach life a little bit differently. As we head into 2016, I want to encourage you. I just want to exhort you this morning to do things a little bit different. How many ever made New Year's resolutions? How many ever carried through on your New Year's resolutions? Generally, within two weeks, we've forgotten what they were. I want you to turn in your Bibles this morning to Psalm 37. We're going to go to a few places, and um, this will be a few that we'll go to. Psalm 37, Proverbs chapter 3, and Jeremiah 29, if you'll mark those places. Psalm 37, Proverbs 3, and Jeremiah 29. And then uh, we'll begin in Ephesians 6. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that we live in a country where um, it's not illegal to do what we're doing here today. That the word, we have access to it. That probably most of us have multiple Bibles sitting um, in our house collecting dust while there are places around the world where um, the word of God is hard to come by. God, sometimes we take for granted the word that we've been given that's so readily available to us. God, I, I don't want to think lightly of your word this morning. God, I pray that we've come to receive with meekness the engrafted word of God. That we've come prepared to receive what you have to say. That our hearts are prepared to receive our ears are prepared to hear, our eyes are prepared to see 
what you have for us this morning. God, I don't, uh, I don't want my words to be enticing words of man's wisdom. But God, that they would be in power and demonstration of your spirit. Because that is the only thing that changes lives. Be with us in this place, Holy Spirit. And speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you that aren't into sports, I, I, um, I, um, I'll try to keep this relatable to you. Um, on a, any, in any sport, there's an offense and there's a defense. The offense is the one that's got the ball. The defense is the one trying to stop them. And I, and I, I think that a lot of times we walk through life I know I do, and, and, and maybe you can relate to this, where we're, we're, we're just reacting to what's going on around us. That we're not proactive, we're not initiating things, but we're just responding. And we go through life with this idea of, of um, K, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. Um, and that'll probably date me that I know that song. But we go through this, this, this world and we go through life and, and, and we just kind of roll with the punches. I, there's a better way to live life than that. Life throws us some things that we don't, we don't expect, but, but God wants us to be initiators, not just res, responders to what's going on in the world around us. I want to I want to talk about a defensive posture and and truths about about uh, when we when we just walk through life with a, a defensive posture. Number one, you'll always be reactive to what the offense is doing. In this instance, we'll always be we'll always be reactive to what's going on around us if we're if we're defensive oriented and, and, and we're walking through life and, and and things happen and we just respond to it. Sometimes we, we pass, sometimes we fail those tests, but, but we're just responding. We, have, we really have no plan for anything. We're just, we're just shooting from the hip. Anybody live like, like that sometimes? Maybe all the time. We don't sit down and really plan through things. We just, walk, we just wake up the next morning and, and, and we just take on the next day. How many, would like to, how many that are in debt would like to be out of debt? But you got to make a plan. How many of you that are overweight would like to lose a little weight? I've figured out through the years that you got to have a plan. I, I don't know if you noticed this, but you can't really see it. But I got this nice little thing for Christmas. Anybody recognize what that is? It's a Fitbit. And, and it monitors how many steps I take during the day. It, it monitors how I sleep at night. It monitors, um, it monitors how, how, how far I walk and, and, and it monitors all, how many times I walk up the stairs and how many times I, I, I um, um, uh, it also can monitor my calories. But I figured out that I got to input that. It'll monitor different types of exercises, but I got to input that. I don't put this on and, and I don't put this on and then the weight just comes off. This is just a tool that, I, I, that, that, that can help me. You, I, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. you got to make a plan. you got to have a plan for those things to happen. How many want to have a, a, a strong, a healthy relationship with your spouse? It doesn't just happen. You have to make plans. You have to plan it out. How many want to have a good relationship with your kids? How many are exhausted when you come home at night and you don't have any energy to play with them? You gotta make plans. Shooting from the hip doesn't work. You gotta have a game plan. The enemy has a strategy against you. It's time that the church get a strategy. Amen? The people of God need a strategy. So if we're always defensive, we're just reacting to what's going on around us, we're not initiating anything. Defense is, is simply just holding ground. We're just maintaining. That's what, the def that's what a defense does. It just, it just tries to keep the other team from scoring. They're not taking ground. They're just maintaining it. The kingdom of God is not about maintaining ground. It's about initiating. It's about taking ground. That's, that's what the kingdom's about. 
The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. That's what, that's what Jesus said. The gates of hell, let, let me just say this, gates are not an offensive tool. They're not an offensive weapon, they're defensive. Walls and gates are, are defensive. So if the gates of hell are not going to prevail against the church, that must mean, that seems to imply to me that the church is supposed to be moving towards those gates. But too often times, we're in defensive mode. We're the gates. We're, we're trying to hold back the enemy instead of taking, taking charge, taking over. Those that are defensive, the, 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 you'll always be responding to your weaknesses rather than operating in your strengths. You know why? Because the enemy, the opponent will always magnify. He will always target your weaknesses. So that's where you're always focusing all your attention is on your weaknesses. He's not going to attack you in your strengths. He's going to attack you in your weaknesses. When Jesus had fasted for 40 days, what did the enemy, what did the enemy come and attack him with? Food. Why? If you've been fasting for 40 days, you think you're going to be hungry? Absolutely. So the enemy knows. He looks for those opportune times. He has a strategy. He's not a moron. I mean, we think that. We think, oh, the enemy's an idiot. Well, you know what? He, he, for, for a guy who, 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 is, who is, such, is such an idiot. I'm sorry. I know there's little kids in here. For, for a guy who's not all that, that wise, he sure fools a lot of us. Amen? So the, those of us that walk through life w w with this idea of, of, of just being defensive, we're always going to be focusing on our, on our weaknesses. You can't win. You cannot win. You cannot win maintaining a defensive posture. You cannot win if you don't have the ball. It is important to keep the enemy at bay. But in order to win, you've got to score some points. You have got to have a plan to move the ball. You've got to have a plan to score. You've got to go, you've got to go into this, this, this thing called life with a game plan. There's not, there's not a football team today that will go into a game without a plan. And we're talking about something futile as care as 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 um as something temporal, we're talking about a leather a leather ball crossing a goal line, and yet they will not go into a game without a plan. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to accomplish. This is how we're going to do it. This is this is this is the plan. And yet we'll go through 2016. We'll we'll hit it head on, and we won't have a game plan. Am I, am I registering with anybody? And then we'll be here next year and we'll wonder why nothing's ever changed. It's because we didn't change the way we approached the year. How many think that God has a plan? Absolutely. The enemy has a game plan. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. The enemy has a game plan. And this is how he, this is how he defeats us. Is he's got a plan. That means that he sat down and he's thought through this process. Anybody ever watch a war movie where they have a, they have a war room where they're, they're planning, they're planning things? Did you know that, that, that it's not, wars are not just war, one on the battlefield, they're, war, they're one in the war room where there's plans being mapped out, carefully mapped out. Their strategy is being developed. Ephesians 6 verse 11 says this, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Anybody ever watch Wiley e. Coyote? Well, we, we don't use that term wiles very often. You use that this week in your, in your vernacular. Anybody use that this week? We don't use, we don't use that term very often. Wiles. So let's break it down. Wiles is this. It comes from the word, a Greek word that, um, I mean, you're going you're gonna to see this immediately what this means. Metho, methodeia, which comes from the word methods, method. Beware, beware, be, so be, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against all the methods of the enemy. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against all of his strategies. This, this word literally means this, to follow up or investigate by method and settled plan. This is a, a well-thought-out process. 
The enemy has a well thought out process when it comes to you. That means he is set down with his cohorts and they have developed a plan against you. They have a method that they're coming at you with. They understand your weaknesses and they're going to attack your weaknesses. They know that. You ever wonder, you ever wonder why someone who deals with rejection has people lined up to reject them? Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that a person that deals with rejection, the thing that is most normal for you to do is reject them too? Have you ever noticed that? Why, why is that? The enemy has a strategy against them. I can remember, and some of you, some of you know these stories, but I can remember, I can remember just a handful of instances from my elementary school years. I remember, I remember in first grade, my teacher jumping all over my case and making me feel like a, a, an idiot in front of the whole class. She did it twice. That's the only two memories I have from first grade. In second grade, I have two memories. That's all. I only have two memories from second grade class, Miss Woodard's class. I, I, Miss Lanier was my first grade teacher. Miss Woodard was, my, was my, um, uh, my second grade teacher. And in third grade, uh, we had moved here in Miss Wynn. And I, and I only say that because I remember something distinct that happened in each of those classrooms. I, was, I, had, I had swallowed a dime in second grade. And I was always putting money in my mouth. And I had got it stuck in my throat. <coughs> and I was like... <coughs> And I was like freaking out. I thought I was going to die. And, I, and the teacher come running to my desk and, and she's like, are you okay? Are you okay? Okay. And then all of a sudden the dime went flying. And then she scolded me instead of caring about me. And she humiliated me in front of the whole class. I remember another time in second grade. <laughs> Uh, we had those little, those little round things that you, you know, the soil things that you put the, the seed in. And you put the seed right there and then you water it and then it grows and it grows and it grows and you watch it like throughout the school year. Well, I thought if water makes a seed grow, then more water makes it grow faster. So, I, you know, it was in a little, a little container. So I filled up the container. And my teacher came by because I thought that was ingenious. A second grader, right? Wouldn't that be normal? Water makes it grow, more water makes it grow faster and bigger. And so my seed, instead of staying where it was, my seed just floated to the top. And instead of helping me, my second grade teacher said this. My second grade teacher, I remember it. My second grade teacher said, well, there goes your project. And she humiliated me in front of the whole class. Third grade, I was called up to the chalkboard eight times seven I didn't know what eight times seven was I had to figure out the problem eight times seven and I'm standing at the chalkboard and I'm I'm freaking out because I don't know what eight times seven is I can't remember what eight times seven is and my teacher humiliates me in front of the whole class Today, I know what eight times seven is, and I'll never forget what eight times seven is. But, but here's, here's, I don't remember anything else from that class. Except I do remember one other thing, and that was when someone else was humiliated. That's the only thing I remember from those classrooms. Here's the point. I, I've struggled most of the time throughout my life with issues of, of not being good enough, being inadequate, being incompetent. I think the enemy has a strategy against me and he started with me when I was in first grade. Do you see that? The enemy knows where you're weak. He knows where to hit you. He knows where to hammer you. And he will hammer it and he will hammer it and he will hammer it. It's important that we understand what is his strategy against me? What is it he's attacking me with? What is it that he's, he's coming at me with? The enemy has a game plan. Wiles means to follow craftily framed devices. Craftly. He spent time. He spent time. He has a plan. Thank God, though. God has a plan. God has a plan for you. Jeremiah 29. We love this scripture. 
It's one of our favorite scriptures, 29, Jeremiah 29. Verse 11, I know you've heard this scripture because you see it everywhere. It's everywhere. You go to the Christian bookstore, it's, it's printed on little plaques. And, and then never mind that it was really speaking to the nation of Israel, but, but we personalize it. And that's okay to personalize this passage of scripture, but we love this. We love the fact that God has thoughts for us. We, th we, we love the idea that God has a plan for us. Don't we like, do you like that? Do you like the fact that, and you like to quote that, God has a plan for my life, and we tell people that all the time. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And it sounds good, and it's true. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. The word thoughts, that means plans. It means purposes. It means intention, that God has an intention for you. He has a purpose. He has plans. I, I, I Notice that, that the word thoughts is tied to plans, purpose, and intention. Let me say this, because you can't have plans without thinking. You have to sit and think about it. You have to sit down and think about the plan. It doesn't become a plan until you think about it. God says, I know the thoughts. I think about the, the, the plans, the, thought, the things that I've thought about. This, this plan, this blueprint for your life. God says, I know the blueprint for your life. I've thought about it. I've designed it. I've, I've carefully crafted this plan and purpose for your life. This chair, this, this stool right here, the, the, people, that, the people that created this, that, 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 that um, um, manufactured this, there was a plan, there was a plan before they ever built this. They didn't just take some wood and just put it all together and go, hey, that'd be, I'll tell you what, that, that'd be good to sit on. That, that, they didn't do that. There was a plan, right? We, Toyota doesn't, well, let, let's, let's, uh, let's go American. Um, Ford or Chevy, or wh whichever one you like, Dodge, they do not just put a pile of metal together and, and then decide what, what they're going to use it for. There's a careful planning process, right? They go into this, they have, they, have, they have teams that plan these vehicles out. They have to plan it out. And yet we go through life without plans. God has a plan for us though, and we like that. We read that scripture, God has a plan for my life. God, God has a plan and a purpose for my life. We like quoting that. Do you have a plan for your life? Uh, are, better, let me rephrase that. Do you know what God's plan is for your life? It's awesome that God has a plan for your life, but do you know what it is? And let me say this. If God has a plan for your life, do you think that God has a plan for 2016? If he has a plan for your entire existence, does he have a plan for next year? God wants us to know what his plan is. God has a plan because he's thought about it and he's meditated on it. And he wants to impart that plan to us. He does not want us walking through another year without stepping into the plan and the purposes of God for our life. We, we, we joke about this and about young people who, who are trying to figure out what they're going to be when they grow up. And some of us grown people, we're still trying to figure out what we're going to be when, when we grow up. But God has a plan and a purpose for, his, for our life and he, he wants us on board with that plan. I co like I said, I coach both of my boys in basketball and there's never a time when we go into a game without a plan, we practice scenarios. We, we practice these scenarios and, and practice so that when it comes game time, they're ready because we've made a plan. This is what we're going to do. We're, we're, we're going to initiate. We're not going to respond. We're going to initiate. That's the idea. That's how you win. And in life, so, so often, we have no plan. We want to take a vacation but we never have the money to take a vacation. But we spend three bucks on Starbucks every day. I'm wondering how much three bucks you could, how much three bucks would add up if you just saved that every day. I'm just saying. 
Psalms 37, 23. I'm sorry if you drink Starbucks. Psalm 37, verse 23. If God has a plan for your life, trust me, he has a plan for 2016. He's already been there. He knows what, it's, it, what, it, what it holds for you. Listen, 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 listen. There was someone in this, there was someone I was talking to that used to work for, yeah, attends this church, that used to work for Enron. And they felt like the Lord told them to get out, to take their money, get, I think, out of their 401k, the stock, sell it all, get out. And in fact, he made phone call to call some relatives and tell them to do the same. And Enron crashed. But he got out before all that happened. His relatives wouldn't listen to him and they got hit, they got hammered. How many think God can, God can let you know things that are around the corner? God can, God can show you those things. He, he, can, he can show you what the next step is. Psalms 37 verse 23 says this, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. What's the next step? What's the name? The, the good man, the good man, the good man is the guy who's, who's, who's a believer, who's a follower of Jesus. Those, the, those that have put on the righteousness of, of, of Christ. That's, that's a good man, a man who, who seeks after God for direction. A good man, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. In other words, God will give you the steps. Step one, do this. Step do, two, do this. Step three, do this. Step four, do this. Here, this is your plan. And what we want to do is we want to walk the floors at night in stress and worry, in stress and worry, in stress and worry. I heard this morning, a 47-year-old, um, 47-year-old, someone that we knew, no, 47-year-old had a widow make her heart attack and died just last yesterday. I had another friend, uh, one of my good friends growing up, uh, 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 is a little bit younger than me, a um, couple of years younger than me, had to be rushed to emergency surgery on Christmas Eve to have open heart surgery. I, I don't know if stress, if it's stress related, but I, I do know this, that stress will make you sick. Proverbs chapter 3. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. But Proverbs 3, you know this passage of Scripture. We know this. We know this passage of Scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Quit trying to figure it out. Quit trying to work it out. Quit trying to, 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 to formulate a plan. Get with his plan. He, he knows the plan. And it's, it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's crazy. It's like we have this, this idea of God as this, like a coach who won't give us the game plan. Well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do, coach? Uh, you know, I got the plan. Okay, coach. Well, what do you want us to do? I got the plan right here. I got the plan. I know what the plan is. Do you think, do you think that if you're going out on the court of life, that God's going to give you the game plan? Do you think that God will sit down with you and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. When the enemy comes in like a, like a flood, I'm going to raise up a standard against him. I'm going to direct you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to show you what to do. How many think that's the way God does this? How many think there are times when God's calling, time out, time out, time out. We're still bouncing the ball. <laughs> and God's saying, time out. I got the plan. You can't see what I see. I got a different perspective. I can see what's going on. I can see what the opponent's doing. I got, I can, I got a clear view of what he's doing. You can't see it. You can't see it because you're, 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 you're all frazzled and confused and, and there's chaos. But I can see what's going on if you'll listen to me. Time out. Sit down. Listen to me. I, I, can, I can explain this. In one minute, I can explain this. Sometimes in 30 seconds because sometimes that's all you get. 30 second time out. Because I see. I see what's going on. <laughs> God says, if you'll trust in me, you'll lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge me. 
Acknowledge, but what, God, hey, God, I, I can't figure this out. Acknowledge him, God, I need help. God, I, I, need, I need a coach to walk me through this. God, 2016, I sure don't want it to be like 2015. Give me the game plan. Show me what to do. Show me how to hit this, hit the ground running in 2016. Show me how to tackle this year that's coming up. I don't want to be in the same place I am right now. Some of you have, have careers that, that have come to a halt. Some of you have businesses that are struggling. Some of you, some of you, you don't, you don't, you don't know where your next paycheck's going to come from. God's got a plan. And, and we, you, God doesn't want you walking through life thinking that he's got the, well, it's just all in, it's all in, it's just the will of God. It's just the will of God. Whatever happens, just the will of God. I'll tell you what the will of God is. Here's the will of God for your life. is to sit down and get the will of God for your life. It's to sit down with him and get the will of God for your life. What is it, God? What, maybe it's a drastic change. Are you okay with that? What if God says, I want you to give up the thing that you that you've have trusted in all this time and I want you to trust me. Could you do that? I, you, I don't think you could do that unless you're hearing from him. I'm not saying God's saying that. I'm saying you need to hear from God. Proverbs 19, 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Anybody have plans? Anybody have lots of plans? Not dreams, you got plans. You, you figured out some things. And you, 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 got, you figured it out on your own. Listen to what it says. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. How many has ever laid out the plans for your life only to find you, yourself falling flat on your face? But it's the Lord's counsel that will stand. What Counsel. That's where me and, me and God have a counsel meeting where he speaks into my life, where I go to him for help. Because that's what's going to stand. I, I think of all the stories throughout the Bible and, 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 and how many times God spoke. And when people listened, it worked out. It was the times when they didn't listen, it didn't work out. Even if it was totally bizarre, it worked out. When Naaman the leper was told, dip in the muddy, muddy Jordan seven times, it worked out. There's no magic formula for dipping in a muddy Jordan River seven times except for you're obeying the Lord. There's no, there's no magic in the Jordan River. Even if, you, even if the evangelist on the television says to buy this, uh, send them $25 and they'll send you the water from the Jordan River, there's no magic in the Jordan River. It's muddy water. People think because Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River that there's something special about the Jordan River. He created the planet. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, it came, it came from him. The entire planet came from him. I'm pretty sure it's all got a little bit of him in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> God doesn't want us thinking up our own plans. He wants us involving him in the conversation. He wants us submitted to his plan. That's what lordship is all about. It's God, what, is you, what do you want from my life? I, it, instead, of, instead of going over here and over here and over here and trying this and trying this and trying this, how about sitting down and saying, God, what is it that you have in store for me? I'm here to listen and I'm not moving. I'm not making a step. I'm not changing directions until you say it's time to change directions. But if you say it's time to change directions, I'm changing directions. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what people think about me. I'm going to follow hard after you and I'm going to do what you say. Sometimes I think we're afraid that people will think we're a failure if we step away from something that God's not in anymore. Moses said, God... 
If you move, we'll move. But if you don't move, we're staying right here. That's the attitude that God wants us to have. What is it you're saying, God? What is it you're directing me to do, God? God will speak. Go to Jeremiah. I'm going to finish with this. I don't think this is on there, but Jeremiah chapter 33. I'm going to end with this, this chapter and this verse. I'm always trying to figure out things. I'm always trying to plan things out in my head. I have, anybody have great ideas? Anybody ever like, I mean, you're like a real, you're a dreamer. I mean, you have all these great dreams. You dream about these big, huge, doing some big, miraculous, awesome things. And it never happens because you never plan. Or maybe you do plan, but God's not involved in the planning. Those that build the house labor in vain if God doesn't build it. God's got to build it. God's got to do it. Jeremiah 33, look what it says. Verse two, thus says the Lord who made it, the Lord who formed it and established it. The Lord is his, is his name. This is what he says. Call to me and I will answer you. Now we can just preach on that till Jesus comes. Call on me and I'll answer you. Call on me. This is God speaking to you this morning. Call on me and I'll answer you. Call on me and I'll answer you. You're calling on yourself and you're looking for the answer inside and God's saying, I got the answer. Call on me and I'll answer you. It's like God setting. It's like, it's like the teacher. It's like the teacher and, 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 and God's like the student. And the teacher asks a question. Ooh, ooh. God's like, I got the answer. I got the answer. Call on me. I got the answer. Call on me. I got the answer. God's saying, hey, call on me. I got it figured out. Listen to what he says. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you don't know. You can't figure it out. <laughs> I got it figured out. I got the plans. I got the blueprint for your life. Call on me and I'll show you it. Call on me. You want to see it? Just call on me. You want to see it? Ask me. Right there it is. There's the blueprint. Check it out. You want, to see, you want to zoom it in? Come on. That's the way God works. God says, call on me and I'll answer you. God came to Abraham and said, I want you to go to a, a city or a place that I'll show you. Whoa. Like a rushing mighty wind, the Holy Spirit came and filled the upper room where they were, they were gathered in one mind and one accord. Woo. That's some good stuff right there. Amen. God wants you to head into 2016 with a game plan. What is it you want for your life? What is it that God wants for your life? God wants you on his page. God, has, God indeed has a plan and a purpose for your life. He has a plan and purpose for 2016. And his plan involves a future and hope. Did you see that in 2911? To give you a future and a hope. God has, God has good things in store for you. Not evil. We read that. Not evil, good things. God has, has plans for good things. Good. Th Everybody say good. Good God in 2016 God has plans for your good in 2016. Amen. Not evil, for good. Amen. Yeah, the enemy has a plan, so what? God has a bigger plan. And if I'll get on if I'll get on track with God's plan, he'll show me, he'll show me how to how to navigate through the enemy. Through all of the enemy's attacks. He'll show me how to navigate through that. But I have, to, I have to sit down. I have to sit down and I have to get alone with God and allow him to speak to me. There's no shortcut here. There is no shortcut. Sit down. Just sit down. Turn off the TV. 
Turn off the internet. Turn off the phone. Get off Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all those other things. Get off of them. Spend time with the one who knows the answer. He's got the plan. He's got the plan. He's got the game plan for 2016. Now we can go through it with a defensive posture, just responding to what life throws at us. And simply react to everything that comes our way. Or we can head into 2016 with a plan to initiate, to initiate some things, to get some things accomplished. What is it? What is it that you desire? What is it that God desires for you? I would bet this, I, 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 I'll, there's just some, gen, just some generalities real quick. I would bet that God's okay if you want to be out of debt. I think God would be okay with that. If you want to, if you want to pay off your car, if, 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 I, I think God's okay with that. Get a plan. Amen? Seek him for a plan. It, it will not happen if there's not a plan. God will show you. God will direct you. There are, there are resources out there. There are godly men who are gifted in that area to show us how to do that. Dave Ramsey's one of them. Crown Financial, I think, is, a, is another um, um, entity that, that, uh, that teaches uh, Christians how to be good stewards over their finances. Do you want to lose weight? Get a plan. Get a plan. Do you want to get past the point where at the end of the month you got more bills than you have money? God has a plan. God has a plan. God's okay with you desiring that. But there's specific things that God has for you individually. There, there are things that God wants to launch you into that some of you, some of you live a frustrated life because you're doing things you were never created to do. And you're constantly frustrated. You're frustrated because your hands, your hands have been given over to something that God never designed your hands to do. And you live constantly frustrated. Get, get along with God. He'll speak to you. Trust me, God will speak. Listen. He'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know. Isn't that awesome? He'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know. Let's bow our heads. God's purpose for our life. God's plan for our life. God wants us in, on board with that. He's not some mean, horrible being that has the plan and doesn't want to reveal it to us. God wants to reveal it to you. Will you make a commitment this morning to spend time with your creator. The one who created us and has a plan and a purpose for our life. Will you commit? We got a few days before we hit 2016. Will you commit over the next few days? This is number one priority. First things first. The first thing is before I head into the new year, before I make any resolutions, before I make any commitments, that I'm going to get alone with my creator and I'm going to allow him to speak destiny into me. I'm going to allow him to reveal the plan for 2016 and I'm going to, I'm going to head into 2016 with a desire to fulfill the plan of God for my life next year. Can we make a commitment to do that so that we're not living life in a reactive posture, but we're initiating the plan of God for our life. Carl said it this morning that it's the kingdom of God working through us and that's what God wants for our life. The kingdom of God working through us, establishing his work here on this earth. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. And God, you don't want us walking through life the same way all the time. God, you have a plan and a purpose for our lives. God, you have a direction for us. You have steps for us to take. Your word is a, is a lamp into our feet, a light into our path. God, direct us, guide us, lead us, show us what you have for us in 2016. God, we love you. 
We trust you. God, I pray that everyone in this room determines this week to get alone with you. That 2016 will be a different year for all of us. We'll not sit back and do life as normal. We'll do life intentional. Initiating the plan and purposes of God in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.